Hey guys, what's going on? Tony Dark here. So today I want to talk about this school shooting that happened in Idaho back in around May of 2021. I'm assuming it's it happened on May 6th, according to this article. Um, I haven't read too much of it. And uh, to be honest, there's not much to really research from here. But I was thinking to myself, so how many shootings has there been in Idaho? How many school shootings has there been in Idaho? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that because there's actually been three school shootings. Um, I think I'll play this little video here and we'll see what's going on. This video pretty much sums up this whole article. So we'll just watch this real quick. A sixth grade girl in Idaho opened fire on her classmates Thursday wounding two fellow students and a school staff member. Local police said the girl was later disarmed by a teacher at Rigby Middle School, more than 200 miles east of Boise, and held until authorities arrived. The girl's name and exact age were not immediately released. Jefferson School District Superintendent Chad Martin says students were immediately sent home with their parents and that classes would be canceled the following day. We train. Uh, very frequently with the sheriff and also on our own for situations. I don't think we can ever fully be prepared, um, but I feel like our staff reacted and our students reacted in the best possible way for the best possible outcome. Um, we will obviously take time over the next days and weeks to, to reevaluate and see where we can continue to improve. Several law enforcement agencies are investigating the shooting, which erupted shortly after 9 a.m. local time. Depending on the outcome of the investigation, Jefferson County Prosecutor Mark Taylor said charges against the girl could include three counts of attempted murder. Medical staff said none of the gunshot wounds were life-threatening. The school staff member is being treated and released for his injury, while the two students are being kept overnight for observation. Idaho Governor Brad Little issued a brief statement shortly after the shooting, writing that he was staying updated on the situation and thanking school leaders and law enforcement for their efforts. So that was from the New York Post. I'll source, cite my sources. Um, this is from the Associated Press. It's the same story. Uh, like I said, I couldn't find too much about the other two shootings, especially the one from 1989. But this article here from May 6, 2021, was um, it does it does mention. A little bit about the incident from 19, nine, uh, 1989 oh, and 1999, excuse me, so both of them. Um, so it says right here, the attack appears to be Idaho's second school shooting. In 1999, a student at a high school in Notice fired a shotgun several times. No one was struck by the gunfire, but one student was injured by uh, the ricochet debris from the first shell. In 1989, a student at Rigby Junior High pulled a gun threatening a teacher and students and took a 14-year-old girl hostage, according to a Desert News report. Police safely rescued the hostage from a nearby church about an hour later and took the teen into custody. No one was shot in that incident. So, technically not a school <laughs> shooting. Excuse me, there was no... um shots fired but it did involve a, a gun and uh, you know this video is not about being anti-gun or anything like that it's just um it's just a concern that i didn't, i wasn't even aware that there was school shootings in, in idaho in the state i'm in so uh that's i don't know i i like to to think that I'm alert and, and know what's going on around here, you know, with, with stuff. But this one from May, kind of like, I don't know, just just slid under my radar. Um, there's a lot of things that I stay involved with or try to keep up with when, I, you know, technology and all these kind of things. So there's so much going on. You know, some things do slide under the cracks sometimes. I'm just surprised that this one did. Um, I am aware that there was a lot of schools being canceled this year because of potential school shootings that were potentially the uh, might have happened but i never actually heard of one being engaged so to me that is uh 
that is uh, really surprising. Before I get move on, actually, I just noticed that this happened in Rigby, and didn't that one from 1999 or 1989? Yeah, it happened in Rigby Junior High. So two of the three shootings in Idaho were from the same town. That's that's um, a coincidence. I don't know. That's weird. This article right here comes from the Desert News. The previous article talked about this, about this article here, the Desert News. Uh, this is Desert News by Associated Press, uh, April 17th, Notice 1999. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Desert News is an affiliate of Associated Press. So, a teenager who fired two shots inside Notice Junior Senior High School with a shotgun he wrapped in a blanket and carried from home on the school bus was described as mentally disturbed. Uh, no one was seriously injured, but teachers barricaded themselves in the lounge and, and school administrators evacuated students across an open field as the teen stalked the foyer. He blasted the door, oh, blasted the door, blasted the floor out outside the principal's office and soon afterward he blew a three inch hole in steel gymnasium door. Narrowly missing three students. Teachers saw him reloading the shotgun after firing the shots and deputies later found three live shells in the gun. I was in a meeting in the elementary school and I was told there had been shots fired in the high school, Superintendent Bob Larson said. I don't possess the words to describe the feeling I had. The incident occurred about the time classes were to begin in the southern southern western Idaho farming community of 500 people three, uh, 30 miles west of Boise. Notice Junior Senior High School has about 180 students. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if that hasn't changed much in 2021. But um, Larson identified the 16 year old sophomore as Sean Cooper and um, I don't know if the they don't really release the names of minors nowadays so I don't know if that's you know if that was like a, a law back then or not and things lots of things have changed but to see the name of the the minor the said minor minor that is the first time I've seen that in an article so um, who lives with his grandparents and has attended notice schools off and on for about five years. He was in custody on Friday. Responding to the emergency call, Canyon County Sheriff's George Norse drew his sidearm, entered the school and saw the boy wielding a 12 gauge semi-automatic shotgun and kitchen knife brought from home. I hollered at him, put the gun down, put the gun down, Norse said. He stared at me. He never took his eyes off of me. He was babbling incoherently. Eventually, the boy dropped the weapons and deputy grabbed him. North said the boy was taken to the West Valley Medical Center in Caldwell and placed in mental hold. There was no indication later Friday what charges might be filed. North said Cooper had spent a month recently at State Hospital South in Blackfoot had been seeing local men mental health officials and was on medication. There was no immediate indication why the student fired the shots, but Norris said rumors had circulated Thursday that the boy had threatened the other students and had a list of those he wanted to kill. I don't think a lot of kids took him seriously, the sheriff said. Larson said no teachers had heard about any threats. There was no reason for any school employees to believe there might be trouble. Saying the bus driver knew a weapon on the bus was totally wrong, Larson said. He was told it was a science project. There was no reason to expect this. I have known Sean for several years, Larson said. As I saw it, he didn't he hadn't been afforded the opportunities that others have when they comes when they come into this world. But he was a fine kid. You wanted to reach out and care for him and and the staff did. Student body president Howard Pennington, 18, a senior, helped get the students out of the school 
after the first shot was fired into the floor outside the office. A second shot before all the students had gotten outside, bust through the metal gym door, scattered lead pal pal uh, pallets <laughs> across the basketball court. Three male students had just moved away from the door when the gun went off. When you hear about this happening at schools around the nation, you think it can't happen in Notice, Pennington said. Notice is a friendly school. We don't even have locks on our lockers. Pennington's little brother Joey had a welt on his shoulder that Norris said was caused by ricochet debris from the first shell. Larson and school principal Gary Timpton quickly moved students away from the building to a bus. Larson said he returned afterwards and found four teachers had barricaded themselves into the lounge with a refrigerator and furniture. They were cowering in the corner. The incident came one year after a 14-year-old student brought two guns to alternate junior high schools in Pocatello. Now, see, I haven't read this article. That's new to me. Now I'm hearing about this Pocatello shooting. Okay. Um, and held police at bay for six hours with other students still in the building. There was no bloodshed by the boy later was expelled by district officials. Also in 1998, a 13-year-old student at Clearwater Valley. Wow. See, now I'm hearing about more more shootings that that goes I said 3 at the beginning of this video. I think I'm up to 5 right now, 5 shootings. Or potential students. One of them technically don't count because there, there was a weapon involved, gun involved, but there was no shot, fought, shots fired. So technically it wouldn't count as a school shooting. But it's concerning still. April 1998, a 13-year-old student at Clearwater Valley Primer, uh, Primary School in Husky pointed a handgun at the back of two teachers and mouthed the words, bang, bang. She later pleaded guilty to a felony aggravated assault and misdemeanors of carrying a concealed weapon and carry of a gun on school property. Okay, I see. I see what's going on now. The Notice School Board has been developing a crisis action plan for just such an incident. Even though no one was injured or killed, Larson said he could not shake the feeling that the district had let the students down. I talked to the high school kids. I apologized to them for what had happened. He said, our job is to provide a safe place for kids. Today we did it. I regret the loss of innocence everyone suffered today. And so now I can see why those other innocent uh, incidents were not considered school shootings because there was no shots fired. But yeah, there you know, there's guns involved and luckily on that other on that other one the one was uh, no one was injured, no shots were fired. And for someone to do that and say bang bang, yeah, that's yeah, that's not funny really but so you know I just learned all this is all new to me so I'm just taking this in right now normally I would go ahead and do some research and plan out this video I did that but I just shortened the research time I'm, I'm like super tired and my throat's been killing me so I took a little shortcut I just kind of gathered some information put this video together and this is all new to me if you live in Idaho, do you know or did you know of any of these incidents here or do you know of any other? Even if it was like a, you know, if shots weren't fired type of situation, uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to share that story with you guys and um, I'll, I'll put this on a, a playlist of Idaho stories or something like that. Um, I might even just put it like under notice Idaho make a playlist or I don't know I don't think I'll have too many stories from there but I have made um, playlists of different parts of Idaho or whatever for this channel like I said I will be doing a lot of videos focused on in Idaho so I hope you guys look um, check them out you now take a look and um, 
yeah, so let me know in the comments what you guys think of these stories. And um, I'll catch you guys on the next video. So before I end this video, I do want to add this little um, this little note. You know, take it with a grain of salt. I can't tell you if this is true or not, but it is concerning. And my source seems to be legit. I mean, I, I trust this person. So uh, anyways, I got a message on uh, social media stating... Um, they asked me, you know, how I was doing. And I said, no, I'm okay. Well, you know, how, what's what's up? And and they said, um, well, I'm currently causing an uproar on on the school district's page because I was told they found a gun at school on a student, but they're announcing that they didn't. Either way, parents were were not notified, and if they want to consider that one post posted a couple hours ago as a notification, that's a freaking joke. Sorry, I'm on the rant right now. So they must have left some kind of notification and uh, I'll look into it, see if I can find it or whatever. But, you know, whether this was true or not, um, there seems to be some uh, confusion between schools and, you know, the parents. Like, it's just not clear sometimes what's going on and, you know... I don't know the you know what exactly happened with the situation. I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. But if there was a gun found with a student, and this happened in Burley, Idaho, by the way, Burley, Idaho, um, please, please um, notify the parents. Let parents choose what they want to do with their kids. So that's just those are just my two cents. Um, let me know how you guys feel. Um, Again, Tony Dark out. See you guys next time.